guys, welcome to my Manasi 7 depotting video. I actually filmed all of this footage in March of 2023 and it's now August, but here we are. I'm going to get started by depotting some pans of product that I have because I wanted to make a couple of large pans and a bunch of smaller ones. So these are some Salt New York, uh, I forget the official name of these, the color balm products that, that she does. This is the shade Blackberry. I was never that nuts about this formula, to be honest. I do really like the Salt New York Sneaky Balm, which you'll see in one of the palettes that I have. I'm just cleaning out the product, wiping it down, and then I go ahead and take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to clean the pan out. And then it's gonna be ready for me to melt a new cream color product right in there. This is the shade Lilac from Salt New York. I actually bought this on deep discount. It was sort of the last stock that she had lying around and you can see the entire pan just sort of flipped out like that. I think it was a little old to begin with. I was so excited about that color and I just really was not the biggest fan of the finish of these color products. I had pulled, as you see on my desk there, a couple of the highlights, but I decided to keep those. Oh, I guess I did depot one more. I think I saved that highlight right there, but I only end up filling two of these pans. So I have not had this whole setup going with a flat iron and depotting things for quite a long time. I used to try and depot my old single MAC eyeshadows, I, I think on a flat iron, maybe even over a candle to sort of melt the plastic off. But I just wanted to have a go at this and see how it would turn out, but I was really kind of going in blind. There's a lot of mixed opinions on whether or not to melt cream products back down. I decided to just because I don't like the way that cream products depotted look if they're not melted. They just never look clean and neat to me. So I knew just from some conversations and preliminary research that it's important to stir the colors as they're melting and when they come off so that one, that you can get rid of any air bubbles that form, but also so you can re-disperse any pigments that might separate. This is the shade Etruscan that I just did my first pan of. It was the very first Manasi color that I had, so I felt like it was fitting to be the first depot. Now I'm picking out these little Artist Kit Co. small pans and palette that I picked up for this project. And then I also forgot to mention, this is just a cheap, $20 Conair flat iron that I got at Target. I was actually gonna buy a Dyson flat iron, not explicitly for this project, but because I wanted to also maybe use it on my hair and maybe eventually I will, but I just got it a cheapie for this because I didn't have a flat iron. Now I'm going in with all of the Manasi eye color pots. This is a, a bit of a different formula from the cream color pots. And then I do also do the strobe lighter formula as well, which is again, even a different formula. So they all performed a little bit differently during the melting and setting process, but I do think that they were all successful. And I do use all of these depotted colors today, all of these months later. This is Hardeen, the darkest brown. And the spatula that I'm using is, I believe, from Artist Kit Co. Those little pans are Artist Kit Co. And the little palette you see back there is also from Artist Kit Co. I love his stuff. I think he's a, a great makeup artist to support, and I just love his company. It's a little bit of trial and error to figure out how much of the cream to put in there. I definitely overfilled some of my pans, but I felt like the eye colors were all really successful. I'm gonna do another large pan with a shade. It's kind of the number one shade that I would recommend people get because it's so versatile. It's Manchetti in the all over color. 
sort of a cafe au lait shade. I use it just to give a bit of sculpting to my face. It has a tiny bit of a pink undertone, but it kind of functions as a bronzer, and I love it and I go through so much of it. So this is what a true skin looks like. I think it came out really beautifully. Smooth, no air bubbles, color was perfect, and I have about a third of that pan left today. And I'm not sure that I would fill another large pan with a true skin. Maybe I would do Furusato from Manasi just because it's an easier pink to wear, but I have an emotional attachment to a true skin because it was my first Manasi color. Okay, I guess I decided to depot a few things and put them in this large Artist Kit Co. palette. I think this was must have been brand new to me at the time, but those are some of the Fit Glow all over colors. Manchetti. The thing is, none of my palettes look like this anymore. I've rearranged them, so I'll try and find a place to show you what everything looks like now, how I've organized it. Took a bit of trial and error. Here I'm just doing some swatches of the colors to make sure that the texture is okay, that the colors came out okay, and they did. Some people have trouble with the colors looking different once you've remelted them and had them set and depotted them but I really didn't have that, that problem. I think that this is the strobe lighter. This is the shade uh, Elysian, and it's kind of the driest formula of the Manasi cream products, but it, I was kind of struggling a bit with this product in the pot, but this is one that actually, it did change texture slightly during this process, but in my opinion, for the better, it gave it a tiny bit more emollients, and I just really prefer that, so I was very happy with how that came out. Okay, this is exciting. Now I'm getting all of the brights and bolds together, and I wanted, I knew I wanted to do a palette of all the brights and bolds. And as you'll see, I did all of the more nude colors as well, nudes and neutrals, and I put them in that large palette, but they, I then went on to buy another one of these small palettes that fits, gosh, I forget, maybe 12 of those, those rectangular pans. He also does even a smaller size, like half the size of these rectangular pans, but I felt like this was a good size for me. This is Fuxine, a very bright flamingo pink. It's one of my favorites. It's so pigmented. This looks like maybe Currenberry. This is Mangosteen, the deepest purple shade. It's so pretty on the cheeks. This, I think, is Alizarin. Maybe Damaskino, but it looks like Alizarin. It's a little hard for me to tell. That's Heliotrope, really fun shade, a lighter purple than Mangosteen, and then this is Ikora, which is a bright cherry popsicle red. Gotta snap an Instagram photo. <laughs> this was a very grammable project. Uh, I actually filmed all of this when we, right before we moved from Chicago to Pittsburgh. Oh, so actually I guess I must have filmed this in February because we moved March 1. So this is, was all filmed the last couple weeks of February. And it took, I did this over several days and it, it took hours. I had, I think, two and a half hours of footage that I edited down to this 20 minute video. I'm just getting all of the air bubbles out here, stirring. The, the pigment separation was only an issue with some of the colors, like some of the pinks, when you melt them down, you can see like some of the orange swirling around. That was really the main thing I noticed, but I was really able to stir it back together. I think the issue too, is that you don't wanna heat it too high. You can see on my flat iron there, I think I have it at, I don't know, I'll double check the setting because I can't really tell from here maybe 250 or 300 degrees, maybe even lower than that. You don't want the product to melt too fast, I think. And I just, as you can see in the footage, I was just using my fingers to kind of pull it off the flat iron because I found any, you don't want to use anything magnetic to grip it and pull it down because you will probably spill some of the melted product by doing that. So. This was just the method that worked for me. I found it to be really successful. A lot of these pans are still going strong. I haven't noticed the products 
going off any sooner than they would have. These have, I think they say about a 12 month shelf life, but I think that you can go even a little bit longer depending on the temperature you store your products at. What am I doing here? I'm not, I think that's Roseat on the right and Copicha on the left. Oh, that may have been her and Barry. It may have been one of the bolts. So yeah, I think those two that I'm working on right now are Kobicha and Roseat. Roseat is one of the shades that it's not even, it's sort of a hybrid between a highlight and a bronzer and a color product. It's very warm. So I find it challenging if you have cool or olive undertones. And I really overfilled my Roseat, as you'll see when it melts down. <laughs> but it did not spill, and I was able to successfully remove it, just barely. It has a bit of a heavier texture, more similar to the strobe lighter versus the cream color pots, which are a little bit looser when they melt down. I gotta be honest, I never reach for this one, and it's one that I probably would not uh, keep in my collection whereas there's not many others that I wouldn't repurchase of this whole library of beautiful colors so that looks like Furusato and mm, Gazania that looks like Sanguinello and uh, Den Souk probably. I, you know, as I was doing this, I was really thinking in my mind how I wanted to organize the colors because some of these are sort of transitional colors. They're not really nudes or neutrals, but they weren't going to fit in my bold or bright palette. Uh, so they, oh gosh, I'm going to have to post pictures of where these ended up. But yeah, these are sort of the brighter bolts that are so beautiful and I have been wearing a lot of this spring and summer. These are the ones that I had the most issues with seeing pigment separation in. Like I'm saying these lighter, brighter colors where I could really see pigments swirling as they melted, but I was able to stir everything back together. And I have not gone through and tested every depotted pot against the original. I probably should just to verify, but I have used all of these colors and I haven't noticed anything to be egregiously different than what I remember using it in the pot. So either way, it has worked for me, I guess, and, and my needs. a little spillage there there were some casualties in this process you definitely want to have paper towels tissues makeup wipes nearby if you're going to undertake this okay now I think we're moving into the nudes and neutrals That looks like Duras, maybe, which is a really gorgeous color. Gosh, it's so hard for me to tell from this footage. I know them all by heart in the palette now. Like, I know my way around all of these colors so well. That's Cicero, that sort of uh, light purple. Gazania or Mangala.
This ends up changing even at the end of this video. I'm just playing around with where I want things to go. I decided to move the highlightery shades. I think that's Ayami, Ayame uh, and Elysian. Ayame is one of the eye colors and Elysian is one of the strobe lighters, but it looks like I'm moving all of the eye colors over to this larger palette because I knew that I wanted to make just an O oh, and there's the casualty that I just decided to leave in the footage, the big casualty where that just that one just flipped over completely. I rectified that by just remelting that one down a bit. I don't even think I added any other product to it. I just remelted it and restirred it and called it a day. I think I was also probably really losing steam at this point in the process because it is tedious, especially if you have as many as I do, which you probably don't because I'm just sort of a huge enthusiast and to not be a professional makeup artist and, and still have all of these, you have to really love the brand, right? So I put all the eye colors and the highlights in that large palette and here I am putting together the bold and bright palette, which is just still to this day, it makes my heart flutter when I look at it and I see it. And every time I post pictures of it on Instagram, I get a lot of positive reactions. So I think it's just a beautiful thing to behold. A lot of people, when I post this, people will ask me where they can get it. You know, they think Manasi makes this. And then I've had people ask, you know, will, will Manasi 7 ever make a palette? Uh, I mean, it would be amazing if they did. I've had some conversations with Suzanne, but I've never, uh, Suzanne Manasi, the person uh, behind Manasi 7. I, I've, we've never really talked about that. I, a lot of times making palettes can be prohibitively expensive for brands. Uh, but I do think it would be very well received if they were if they were ever going to do something like that. So at this point, with the materials that I had, it looks like I just went ahead and put all of the bolds and neutrals. I kind of configured them in a Tetris-like way into this large palette, and then I also moved things around in my small salt new york zippered palette you see there but again nothing really the the bold palette has stayed exactly the same but nothing else really looks like that i now in this large uh longer artist kit co palette that i'm filling right now that has a bunch of viseart powder blushes in it i'm not even sure that i'm using that for any cream products right now i think it's exclusively a uh, powder palette but I have another I bought another of the small palette that the bolds are in and that's what all of my nudes and neutrals are in and they fit perfectly so I basically have a nude neutral palette and a bold bright palette and you know if we're traveling I can take both of those with me and have everything I need it's incredible and then the salt New York palette also looks different the um, the large palettes of Manchetti and Etruscan are still in there, but I'm no longer using the Sneaky Balm. And I forget, maybe I, I'll have to check. I might still have the highlights in there, but I'm blanking. I think here I was talking through what all of those shades are, <laughs> but I just decided to do a voiceover because I thought it would be better for this style of video. Just be holding the beauty of that perfect little palette. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know some of you have been waiting for this video for forever. I'm happy that I was finally able to get it done and I'll look forward to seeing you guys in my next video, hopefully very soon. Take care.